but we talked before right about this i think maybe it came from a super chat originally but it's like talking about directors like kubrick who were legendarily difficult and demanding and stuff but then the end result is kind of worth it you get like a much more intense movie mm. a much more precise movie with great performances um and yeah the question was really like well how much can you realistically put your actors through in terms of adversity and and um you know almost like emotional um abuse to get the right performance out of them and it feels like uh, you know right now we're sitting around about zero you know we we just don't want to do anything with our actors like they can't be remotely uncomfortable uh they can't have any kind of physical hardship we don't want them to get uh, even a, a bump or a bruise or anything we don't want them to feel sad we've got a therapist on standby and it just shows it shows in the performances there's no sense of like grittiness or realism or intensity to any of it I, like rings of power is a perfect example no, sterile, nobody's yeah. performance throughout that like where we bought into there wasn't really a single prefer uh, person where we looked at them and thought yeah really feeling that character they nailed it there yeah no it's um yeah to your point i mean i don't know if it's true or not i'd heard a rumor they like chris uh, not chris, uh, christopher nolan like banned chairs on the sets of his movies um that was a pretty big story i don't know if that was ever confirmed or not but i know he's notoriously i wouldn't say difficult to work with as much as he just expects you know uh, he has a certain level of uh expectations for people on, on his films and you don't get that sense from anything on rings and rings of power i mean it all again go back to the original interviews for it none of them were talking about the universe that Tolkien created. They were all talking about how important it was that they are diverse now and, you know, that they're going to be, we're going to be the first ever. Like, none of them actually cared about the universe. They cared about their own personal stake and how it was going to impact their personal legacies and their opinion. And that mm. carried over into the production and the acting where they were there for themselves, not for the story. And that's kind of, you know, what we see more often than not nowadays. And yeah. I think it's generally understood, like, especially over here, there's sort of the attitude of the great British eccentric. It's someone who's going to have very strange requests. They like weird things, but people kind of like them because that breeds creativity and they're likely to go off in a different direction than other people would. And so even if they are a bit weird, if you can keep them around, they're generally quite useful, at least in something. And when you've got Hollywood, these are supposed to be the best people. They're supposed to, you, you want them to work hard. And I don't think many people care if someone's asking that you get paid really well if the rewards are worth it you're there voluntarily and this i think that's shown in things like it doesn't really harm the career tom cruise did something else he also did one of these rants at oh people. yeah hasn't harmed his career at all he's done really yeah. well i, I, I for, like for my, I, I want i want to see stuff like that mm -hmm. i want people being mm -hmm. intense and i want them yep. to care about what they're doing and if it means that they're an asshole and they go on a bit of a tirade okay fine you know, as, lo as long as it's not, like, fucking racist or something like that, like, they're just ranting about, like, technical issues or frustrations with crew members or whatever, no problem, because that's that's what you expect. Like, um, you know, the, the emotion should be running high on set. People should care enough about what they're doing that they will shout about stuff. Um, and they're not constantly walking on eggshells because, oh, I don't want to offend someone. You know, I wouldn't want someone to feel threatened by me, like, being a bit overbearing. Like, that's that's how you end up with, like, a bunch of pussies, like, just talking to their therapists on set instead <laughs> of actually doing work. Yes, yes. And that's what the best movies do. They, they create some kind of emotion in you. And so you're going to have to offend people. You're going to have to push the line. You're going to have to put passion into it. Otherwise, if it's just grey and boring, then it's not going to get emotion out of you and you forget it as soon as you leave the cinema. And there's been so many movies where... By the time I got home, I can't remember it. And it's like, well, you're supposed to talk about it? I, but I've forgotten half the movie on the way back. It was that forgettable. didn't leave an impact at all. Um, yeah. And I, I think with a lot of this stuff, the intention that you go into it with shines through in the finished work. And so... Um, That's a good I, point, because we, we talk about Tom Cruise, and, and we see that with him and the passion. Mm. He is Tom Cruise is a bit unhinged, okay? And that's a good <laughs> thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> And, and it shows in his work. And to Disru's point, that passion that Tom Cruise brings, like it or love it or hate it, it shows in the film. And we tend to always love the film. And that little leaked audio that we heard from him, you know, during that like the lockdowns and all of that stuff, that that's the same passion that you get from Tom Cruise, where he's jumping off, you know, cliffs and jumping out of airplanes just to say thank you to the audience for coming to see his movie. You know, I mean, it's it's amazing. Go ahead, Disru. Though the, there's a great uh, sorry, I'll, sorry. I'll, 
um, there's a great quote from Tandy Newton who worked on worked with him, sorry, on Mission Impossible Two, uh, and it's really, it's really funny anecdote where like they were doing a scene together and he was really unhappy with the dialogue that she'd been given, um, and because it was John Woo who was directing it, he like wasn't particularly great with English, and so he was sitting in a booth like uh, watching the the whole thing get uh, like played out. And, like, Tom Cruise was, like, ranting at Tandy Newton, like, no, your lines don't make sense in this scene. But, like, all she could focus on was they had a zit on his forehead, and because he was so fucking intense, it was, like, getting bigger with, like, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's passing minute. <laughs> it's, really like, blood moment. pressure threatening to burst it, like, in front of her. <laughs> Well, to be fair, that was the only bad Mission Impossible movie, too. Yeah, it two wasn't was, a great two, one, yeah. Two was terrible. Two that's was, pretty, that was the only, that's what we will say, though. Like. That one's the worst one. It's like, it's a pretty good series, then. That's very, very true. Very true. Because they are. So we got how many of those left? Two, right? Yeah. Hopefully two ten part for Dead Reckoning. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. I think that could be a billion dollar film, actually, with coming off the momentum that Top Gun Maverick and, shockingly enough, Tom Cruise, at this point in his career, is bigger now than he's ever been, and he was already the biggest movie star we'd ever seen he's prior. Like, to <laughs> he's had like three big phases of his acting career because he made the mm -hmm. comeback after um, Tropic Thunder, and then like yep. settled and has come like now it's like exploded after he's like the new co post COVID star. He's like yeah, the only it, one it's left. kind of like we're we're, Wild. we're hungry for movie stars, and the, the question was always like, well, we need another, we need like a, a young Tom Cruise. And we didn't get one, and so eventually, just actual Tom just, Cruise just stepped Tom back in, and he was like, "Fuck it, I'll do it myself." Then, <laughs> and like, then we just got him. It's like it. fine, you know, you're, you're you're sixty, but you look about forty. You can still yeah. do all the action scenes. Have at it, Tom. Like, let's go. Uh, we yeah, all we'll wait another for decade it. for the replacement. <laughs> yeah. it, it is amazing how Hollywood are able to get in their own way because you say people are hungry for movie stars, and they are. People like like whether it's good or bad thing. People do like to idolize movie stars and things like that, and they like to see a, a real hero on screen. It's an emotionally very satisfying thing. But you take a look at someone like Henry Cavill. Like 20, 30 years ago, Henry Cavill would have been a massive movie star. Yep. He would have been in everything. He would have been like the top superhero movie. Yes. But Hollywood just, they are determined to for that not to happen. It's like they don't want Henry Cavill or people like him to become big movie stars now. And, and they're going out. They're actually just getting in their own way. It's like, what is wrong with it? Just let him be a movie star. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The and, idea and of profit think, uh, from it. People keep like pushing the fact that like, well, The Rock was kind of pushed in, in favor of him. Um, and there was a really interesting thread on Twitter, um, you know, a couple of weeks back talking about like The Rock has made like pff, more money than practically anyone. But like he doesn't have any book. He doesn't have any movie he's, legacy behind him. He's like, a manufactured thinks, movie star. He's a manufactured yeah, like, movie star. Yeah. Nobody like looks at The Rock and thinks like, oh, he was he was like known for this. Like, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, for example, you'd be like, well, that was the Terminator. or That was Conan the Barbarian. You know, the like roles that you remember, whereas yes. with The Rock, he doesn't have anything. It's just like, I, I, I'd struggle to even uh, like the think. No, wait. <laughs> the Tooth Fairy. Was he <laughs> the Tooth Fairy. The legendary oh, yeah. CGI moment in The Scorpion King. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, all, you know, it's all memes that he's known yeah, for, he, I guess. I mean, like, you, you can you can compare that to, to, like, I mean, Will Smith before, you know, he kind of lost all of it. Like, Will Smith has iconic films we talked about this uh recently on a live stream about will smith and how big he was back in the 90s and the iconic films that you can attach his name to that he was part of you can do that with tom cruise you can do that you can even do it with chris pratt now you can do it with denzel washington you can't do that with the rock the rock does not have a lot of films that you just attach him as like he's the single reason that this film is a billion dollar film you know what i mean you just can't do it yeah i i, I likened him to like <sighs> Watching a, a movie by The Rock, it's like going to McDonald's or Burger King. Like you've probably done it hundreds of times in your life, but you don't remember a single experience of it. It's just <laughs> you know, it, it satisfies the need at the time, and that's all it is. And like that—that's kind of what he is as like uh, as a movie star. He's like the fast food joint of of yeah. uh, and actors. Black Adam really really exposed that. Finally, it finally was exposed that he's just not the movie star that he's perceived to be. He is a star. He's a he's one of the most famous professional wrestlers ever and I watched professional wrestling back when when during the attitude era and he was amazing you know he he is a yeah. star and he went on to become a star in movies but he is he's a manufactured star it's because he's 
I don't know what it is about him. He's such a, it's such a strange situation because he is a star. His name carries a lot of weight, but he doesn't turn the needle. It's not like you can put the rock in. You can't put most people in just anything now and it turn the needle. But with the rock, there's this perception that if the rock is starring in something, it's going to be a huge hit. And that's just not true. It just isn't true. You know what it is? He's safe. Right. If, if Disney designed movie stars instead of movies, then The Rock is what they would produce. He, yeah. he is like he never does anything really controversial. He's never involved in anything, you know, like, oh, he's in the tabloids because he said this or he did this or whatever. He never takes on a project that's like really pushing uh, the limits of, of the art or anything or something a bit different or uh, crazy. It's all just really Imagine safe really if corporatized he, like something that allows him to be in a, a fucking khaki like shirt in the jungle somewhere and like that, that's all it is it's just the same thing movie. over and over again but huh? imagine he like has a be in the whale for example could you ever see him have to do a role like that <laughs> yeah yeah be like, i almost want to see it just to see how uncanny it would be to see him yeah. have to do a serious well, role if you'd asked me if you'd asked me 10 years ago could i see brendan fraser doing a role like that i would have said no right you know, well, like it's not an actor I would have associated with that kind well, of emotional intensity. I, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I, I think about Vin Diesel and say, you, "Could you see him in that role?" He did do a movie called A Man Apart a long time ago. That was that's his best movie by far. I don't know if uh, it went under the radar, but it's called A Man Apart, and it's it's he's really fucking good in the movie. Normally, if you ask me though to say, "Hey, could you see Vin Diesel in something like that?" I couldn't. I certainly can't see The Rock in something like that. I guess I could be surprised, but maybe The Rock doesn't do it because he knows he can't do it. You know what I mean? Maybe that's why he's never attempted I, it. I, I, I think the, the, doing... rock is, the Rock is more of a brand than a person. You know, like, yeah. if you go to see a movie by The Rock, now you kind of know what you're going to get. It's going to be a feel-good, sort of family-oriented film. It's probably not going to be, like, R-rated or anything like that. Not too violent. Um, he's going to be playing, like, a fairly jovial, charismatic guy because that's what he is. That's what he does. And, you know... I'm not knocking his success. He's been fantastically successful and he's made a shit ton of money out of it and he's good at it. It's just like it the result is, well, it doesn't create a real impression. It doesn't like make any lasting legacy for yourself. Well, it's well who because is, who do you, you think create, is a Oh, go ahead, go ahead. If you create something which has just been like manufactured to be safe, it doesn't have any soul. It's not going to make anyone feel anything either way or the other. It's just kind of there. Whereas yeah. the difference between Henry Cavill and Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise was grandfathered in. So he was already such a big star that if his name came up in conversation, oh, oh he'll, he'll get audiences in. Whereas Henry Cavill had to push through. And you see this in comedy. Um, if you think about, um, I'm going to have to use British comedy because I don't know American comedians, um, but the same comedians which are on TV now over here are the same ones that were there 12, 15 years ago. They're just not funny anymore because the only ones which remain are the ones that are safe. There are exceptions to that, which are people like Jimmy Carr, who get away with it because he was grandfathered in, because he comes from such a long time ago, and he's such a big star, they can't get rid of him. And I think you have that with everything. Henry Cavill was, he was not the person they want on set, because he will go up to the writers and say, that is wrong, you need to change it because it should be this. And that causes trouble for them. They would much rather have The Rock, who's kind of um, safe, He's just a big muscly guy that's going to fulfill the role, and he's going to look the part, and that's it, and he's not going to cause any trouble for them. And so if yeah. you don't rock the boat, you get moved into the position that someone like Henry Cavill would have fulfilled normally. Yeah. Yeah. And, <clears throat> I mean, the one guy that's current that's a that is a I think he's a legitimate star is Chris Pratt. He, he's kind of the one guy that's kind of come out of the last several years and he is a true movie star. He's probably the only person. And yeah, it should be Henry Cavill. I agree with your initial point when you brought up Henry Cavill. I've mentioned that many times is Cavill should be a mega star by all standards uh if if he had an industry that actually you know saw the value that he brings because he should be um but it's current hollywood for you i mean one guy i would say to watch out for is uh, alan richson like he did reacher he was in fast 10 like that guy he's got the he's got the acting chops he's got the the sheer fucking like presence physically uh he's obviously enormous um, and he's he's young enough to to be able to do this for the next ten fifteen years. Uh, oh, I think he? he could be. I think he's like late thirties, something like that. Hmm. Um, so yeah, like not super young or anything, but like he's got um, you know he's got a little bit of experience and a bit of charisma about him. And I think he could he could go on to big things because he was you know like I say he was in Fast Ten. He's going to be in the next one, I would imagine. Um, you can also see in that role he played in Fast Ten, watching him on screen, you realize because he's playing a kind of ambiguous character. He's He's 
kind of a villain, but he he thinks of himself as a good guy. And you could definitely see him, like, he could play both good guy and villain roles. He's not necessarily typecast. You can see that he has a diverse range just in that movie. That's a hard role, yeah. what he did in Fast 10. Like, he, he, you, it's easy to look at that role and think, oh, he's just playing a big, muscly guy. Like, No, he plays it really well. It's it's a hard mold to, it's a hard role to pin down emotionally, and he does a great job of it. Yeah, and he's got it, the confidence and the swagger as well, which... He does, like, and he looks helps. good in a suit. It is weird to think about what actually... How, how a movie star becomes to be, because remember when Taylor Kitsch was like Hollywood's, like they tried to push him in everything, whether it was yeah. John Carter, but now I th- John Carter was good. It, I thought John Carter was good. It flopped, but it was good, but he was in a lot of stuff in a very short amount of time. And it was obvious that Hollywood had keyed in on Taylor Kitsch as the next mega star. And like it never Worthington. happened. So yes, yes, yes. Sam yes, yeah. yes. And they, they it, tried to do it with Jonathan I, majors as well. And they've had to abort <laughs> that one. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> And like, I'm still shocked that Taylor Kitsch didn't become a bigger star because even though some like Battleship w- flopped, John Carter flopped. He was in X Men Origins Wolverine. I wasn't the X Men Origins when he was Gambit, right? Yeah, Is that what it was. Yeah, yeah. everyone. And was I think he was unlucky that. in that. Like, if you're associated with a bunch of flops, it might not be your fault, but it yeah, 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 kills your career. You know? Yeah, what happened to and- Michael Fassbender. Fassbender. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I, I, I don't know if Taylor Kitsch is doing anything these days, but I always liked him as an actor, but it never happened. And yeah, we've seen other pushes like that. Uh, Sam Worthington, I never understood that one. Uh, no, he no. is boring as fuck. And uh, he just, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> he yeah. is boring as hell. And uh, like, I, I'm one of the five people on the planet that likes Terminator Salvation. 